For the first time in 55 years, Ford is expanding the Mustang family, bringing the famous pony into the electric age with the Mustang Mach-E, an all-new all-electric SUV born of the same all-American ideals that inspired the best-selling sports coupe in the world. Ever since the original Mustang took the world by storm in 1964, it quickly came to represent the best of the American spirit, freedom, progress, fast performance, and a touch of rebellion. Now Mustang is ready to reimagine these ideas for a powerful electric future. With space for customers, growing needs and advanced over-the-air updates and continue to improve the vehicle. At the first ever Detroit Auto Show, Henry Ford said he was working on something that would strike like fork lightning, said Bill Ford, executive chairman Ford Motor Company. That was the Model T. Today, the Ford Motor Company is proud to unveil a car that strikes like fork lightning all over again. It's the all-new, all-electric Mustang Mach-E. It's fast, it's fun, it's freedom for a new generation of Mustang owners. Developed in a century-old brick building a few blocks away from Henry Ford's first factory in Detroit, uh, Ford brought the Mustang Mach-E to life through a development process concentrated entirely on customers' needs and desires. The result is a sleek, beautiful SUV that delivers spirited ride and handling with state-of-the-art connected vehicle technology that makes Mach-E even better over time. When it arrives in late 2020, Mustang Mach-E will be available with a standard and extended range battery options with either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive power by permanent uh, magnet motors. Equipped with an extended uh, range battery and rear-wheel drive, Mach-E has targeted EPA estimated range of at least 300 miles. In extended range all-wheel drive configuration, Mach-E is targeting 332 horsepower with a 417 pound-foot of torque. With the standard all-wheel drive var uh, variations, targeting uh, quicker times to 60 miles per hour than the base Porsche Macan series. Ford also will offer two special performance versions. The GT is targeting 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 4 seconds, making it faster off the line than a Porsche Macan Turbo. The 2020 Toyota 86 provides exciting rear drive performance for a price that most enthusiasts can afford. While other value-minded alternatives exist, they don't offer the same combination of athleticism and practicality that the Toyota does. Its excellent driving position and generous cargo space are offset by middling material quality and a small back seat. Still, the lightweight coupe is a precision instrument that boasts a balanced chassis with communicative uh, steering. Its four-cylinder engine isn't particularly potent or refined, but the 2020 H6 shines when tracing corners rather than drag racing. The new 2020 Toyota serves up a new standard features and shuffles the H6 lineup. Every model now has an enhanced infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capability. The H6 also adds a dark gray paint color called pavement and there is the new top of the line trim, the Hakone Edition which gets exclusive green paint, unique 17 inch Wheels and trim specific interior details. The TRD handling package adds performance equipment such as more powerful Brembo brakes, upgraded uh, shock absorbs, and special 18 inch wheels with sticky Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. However, the kit isn't available with the automatic transmission or on the Hakone uh, edition. The price tag is at $30,790 for the GT edition, and the 86 will be $27,940. And the Hakone edition will be $30,825. There it is. If someone 10 years from now pops the hood of a lightly racked 2020 Supra and says B58 engine, no shiz, oh, whatever profanity is popular at the time, we'll be surprised not that there's anything wrong with the BMW inline 6. In fact, it is one of the smoothest and lag free turbocharged engines in the world. If you were setting out to build a rear-wheel drive sports car powered by a turbocharged inline six, it's about as good a starting point as you could find. Some will still consider it sacrilegious to power a Supra with anything but the legendary 2JZ inline six of the Mark IV Supra, and less importantly, 
the Fast and the Furious fame. We were expecting this Supra to be much more like a modern BMW, which is to say plenty capable but little numb. Instead, there is a smoothness to the Supra that we haven't felt in a BMW in years. Turning is crisp without being too heavy. The claimed 50-50 front rear weight distribution, there's a spec, lends itself to tuning for minimum understeer while an electronically controlled limited slip differential ensures great traction on corners exit. The transmission's logic and sport mode makes shifting with the paddles an exercise in vanity. With a nearly identical component set as the BMW, including adaptive dampers, a shear plate stiffening the front end, 19-inch BMW spec Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires, 17 and 18 inches will be available too. And Brembo brake uh, hardware, the Supra's uh, tuning limitations were defined by a crisp box. The personality instilled in the chassis comes down to the critically important knobs the Toyota controlled. When asked what the Toyota engineers thought of the Z4, they had no answer. Not because they didn't want to badmouth the competition partner, but because they had never driven nor even laid eyes on a Z4. The new Supra is equipped with more than 300 horsepower, a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of less than 5 seconds, a target curb weight of about 3,300 pounds. Kaisan makes it pretty clear that Toyota wants us to think less about the numbers and more about its new hero car feels. But to review, this is what we know. Toyota has revived the Supra name for a new sports car in collaboration with BMW. BMW gets the Roadster Z4, which we've had a similar exposure to, while Toyota gets the Coupe. As we mentioned, BMW supplies the engine and it's paired with the ZF's ubiquitous 8-speed automatic. Both cars will be manufactured by Magnus there in uh, Austria. The Supra will hit a dealership midway through 2019 as a 2020 model and probably will ring it at about $50,000, most if not all of the camouflage switch gear we saw the cabin look uh, BMW-like. The engine will flaunt a 335 horsepower and an inline four also is in works but won't be offered at the start. Hyundai today unveiled its innovative Vision T plug-in hybrid SUV concept at the 2019 LA Auto Show. The Vision T is the seventh in a series of Hyundai Design Center concepts expressing Hyundai's evolving sensuous sportiness global design language. We pursue innovative solutions to design and the emotional value to our product experience. Through sensuous sportiness design language, said Sung Yap Lee, the senior vice president and head of the Hyundai Global Design Center. The SUV concept has a matte green exterior finish and is powered by a plug-in hybrid powertrain indicating its eco-lifestyle focus and inherent balance and the environment in which it is driven. The side window design is ultra clean and seamless with a futuristic frameless daylight opening and a satin chrome garnish. The oversized satin chrome alloy wheels feature ample voided area with dark orange brake calipers. Visible within the split five spoke wheel design, the beveled sides of the wheel spokes feature a matte gray finish descending into a voided areas highlighting the brilliance of the satin chrome uh, spoke faces from above. A special glass pattern is embossed within the roof glass structure. These dynamic effects carry into the Hyundai logo design. The H design is dark chrome. When illuminated, it is enhanced with a bright green and deep red hue for sharper dimensionality. Slotting into the Mazda SUV lineup in the narrow space between the Saab Compact CX-3 and the Compact CX-5 is the new and curiously named CX-30. Why isn't it called CX-4? We asked uh, Mazda. It's kind of a long story regardless, we like the way it looks. Mazda designers gave it a more severely forward canter rear window and chunkier black plastic body cladding to help differentiate the 2020 Mazda CX-30 from its other crossover siblings. The CX-30 comes standard with uh, impressive technology both in terms of connectivity and driver assistance features. Equipped with the perky and responsive engine seen in uh, Mazda 3, the CX-30 suggests it'll ooze with that enthusiast 
appeal for which Mazda is famous. Although Mazda didn't specify, we expect the CX-30 to go on sale in the U.S. starting in the early 2020. If you want the best value for your money, we would probably choose the select trim level on the CX-30 as you get more features for not much more money. The select comes with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, and a leather wrapped steering wheel and a shift knob and a keyless entry. All of the trim levels come with the same 2.5 liter engine and are available in all wheel drive for another $1,400. We think the front wheel drive is adequate for this car, especially since the EPA estimates show that for similar models, all wheel drive drops the fuel efficiency significantly. All of the CX-30s are equipped with the 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with 186 horsepower and up to 186 pound-feet of torque. It's the same engine in the 2020 Mazda 3, a six-speed automatic is the only transmission available on the CX-30. Given the attributes shared between the 3 and the CX-30, we expect the CX-30 to perform similarly, although Mazda hasn't released details in the forthcoming uh, suspension, but uh, we were very satisfied uh, with its ability to shift uh, properly, especially through corners. All that times the 3's engine was somewhat underwhelming. Overall, we were impressed by its performance, which is competitive with those in its class. Even as SUVs have dented the market for cars and some automakers are abandoning them, Volkswagen doubled down with an all-new 2019 Jetta compact car, aimed at being more competitive and capturing a bigger share of the remaining buyers for such cars. For 2020, the Jetta and the sportier Jetta GLI carry over with a little significant change other than slightly higher prices and shorter warranty. The new Jetta, which had been a bit smaller and more expensive than most rivals, now competes directly in size, value, and mainstream compacts dance including the Hyundai Elantra Kia Forte, Mazda 3 Subaru Impreza Toyota Corolla and soon to be redesigned Nissan Sentra. But for those buyers who still want something a little sportier and fancier, VW uh, followed with the new Jetta GLI which offers more power and upgraded chassis bits, manual or dual clutch automatic transmissions, a bit more aggressive styling and more features. It also came with a much lower and more competitive price than the previous GLI. Uh, the GLI rivals uh, sportier compact models including the Honda Civic Si, the Hyundai Elantra Sport, and the Kia Forte GT as well as the VW's own Golf GTI. Other than slightly higher prices uh, for a much shorter 4-year bumper-to-bumper warranty is down from 6 for the 2020 model year for both cars. Though they gain 2 years of free scheduled uh, maintenance, also standard for 2020 is VW's uh, new generation CarNet connectivity system that offers in-car Wi-Fi with a data subscription, the regular Select and the Select Premium models add standard wireless charging and the R-Line models have a standard 6-speed manual transmission. The newest addition to Volkswagen's forthcoming lineup of electric vehicles was just revealed at the 2019 LA Auto Show and it's an EV wagon called ID Space Vision. Shown off in concept form only, VW is saying the eventual production version uh, will squeeze 300 miles of EPA estimated range out of an 82, 82 kilowatt battery. Though the company has not run the vehicle through any real EPA testing yet, VW said it may come to the United States in 2022. The ID Space Vision is perhaps surprisingly a more spacious variant of the ID Vision sedan concept. VW showed off at the 2018 Geneva uh, Motor Show. Sitting on massive 22-inch wheels, the car measures 195.2 inches in length, a good 10 inches longer than the 2020 Tiguan SUV and nearly as long as the 198.3-inch Atlas SUV. The new concept car is the seventh entry into the ID lineup, or the eight if you count. VW's IDR race car, all of which are being built on the same modular electric vehicle platform. As far as the performance goes, VW says the ID Space Vision will be powered by an electric motor on the rear axle that can generate about 275 horsepower. 
The 2020 ILX sedan is essentially a gossiped up uh, version of the L, already excellent Honda Civic. However, the accurate interpretation lacks the performance that its namesake promotes and the excitement that certain Civic models provide. Its dutiful powertrain and poised chassis are appreciated, but we expect more driving engagement in this segment. Although a slew of desirable and high-tech features are standard, some aspects of it are showing their age despite a recent redesign. Still, the 2020 Acura ILX is a well-built and nicely priced alternative to more expensive subcompact uh, rivals. The 2020 ILX is one of the best deals among the subcompact luxury sedans. We think that the value is optimized by the premium and technology packages. While both bring a host of luxurious upgrades, their highlights include leather upholstery, upgraded infotainment features, more driver assist, and the full Zoot ELS audio system and the A-Spec package may give the illusion of enhanced performance, but the kit only supplies superficial improvements that aren't worth the money. The sole powertrain is a 201 horsepower four-cylinder with a front-wheel drive matted to smooth eight-speed automatic transmission. The engine, to be honest, revs easily, and although the ILX isn't the quickest car in its class, its character makes us pine for the VTEC-powered Honda and Acura sedans from years gone, uh, gone by. Handling is poised and confident, but not particularly memorable road and wind noise permeate the cabin here more than in rivals such as the Audi A3 or the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, especially at highway speeds and still the smallest Acura sedan has excellent brake pedal uh, feedback. So Acura unveils the hand-built PMC edition at the 2019 LA Car Show. The automaker finally brought a second vehicle into the mix. If you don't remember what the whole PMC thing is all about, uh, PMC stands for the Performance Manufacturing Center, which is the facility in Ohio where Acura built its uh, NSX supercar. The PMC Editions car are very limited, runs off otherwise normal production, but very well optioned. Uh, vehicles are essentially hand assembled by highly skilled technicians. Acura is offering just 330 PMC edition MDX, 300 for the US and only 30 for our friends in Canada. What else separates a PMC edition from a regular MDX? Well, for one thing, it's offered in only one color. A bait, a lovely one, it's called Valencia Red Pearl, and even that's given special love attention at the factory. There are also a bunch of gloss black exterior trim uh, pieces that are exclusive to the PMC and gloss black 20 inch wheels. Inside is all a sea of exclusive black leather and Alcantara with the red accent stitching. The rest of the equipment is a mix of A-Spec and Sport Appearance Package stuff, which all the safety features like the Acura watch and the infotainment and navigation equipment thrown in. What you'll notice very clearly is a distinct lack of any performance modifications. The PMC is still powered by the Acura's 3.5 liter direct injected V6 that still makes 290 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. That engine is again matted to a 9-speed automatic transmission and paired with Acura's super handling all-wheel drive system. The hand-built uh, PMC will retail for somewhere around in the mid-60,000 range. Cadillac spent almost two decades building a lineup of sedans Americans can be proud of, only for buyers to abandon those vehicles in favor of crossovers and SUVs. So Cadillac changed course, deploying the XT5 and then the smaller XT4 at the 2019 Detroit Auto Show. Those two models get a bigger sibling in the form of the three-row 2020 Cadillac XT6. The XT6 bridges the gap between the Cadillac's other XT series crossovers and the massive Escalade SUV. The new crossover is based on the same basic platform used by the Chevrolet uh, Tra uh, Traverse, uh, Buick Enclave, and the GMC Acadia. From Cadillac's fellow General Motor brands, likely competition includes our Acura MDX, Lexus RX 350L, and the equally new Lincoln Aviator. So what does the Cadillac bring to the party that's different? The same ruthlessly angular exterior styling as the X-T4 and X-T5, modified to fit the X-T6 bigger frame for starters. The X-T6 uh, looks distinctive, but as with those other Cadillac models, 
the styling isn't um, exactly uh, pretty. Under the skin, the XT6 features the standard front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive. The sole available engine is a 3.6 liter uh, V6, which produces 310 horsepower and 271 pound feet of torque. A cylinder uh, deactivation system lets the engine run on just four cylinders under the light loads to boost fuel economy. The V6 is coupled to a nine speed automatic transmission. The sport trim level, one of the two alongside premium luxury, gets adaptive dampers, a faster steering ratio, and a returned all wheel drive system. Kia's concept uh, for the LA Auto Show is called the Habanero. We'll spare you Kia's spicy puns, and it's a pretty traditional electric compact crossover, but Kia doesn't want you to think of it that way. It says the Habanero can't be so easily defined, so we're going to let Kia's fairly ridiculous press release do a lot of the talking here. According to them, the Habanero is a new category of car, an ECEV or an all-electric everything car that's a combination of commuter, crossover, uh, sport utility, state-of-art technology, workroom, adventure vehicle key also describe it as a wonder car and says that it has more advanced tech than what helped land man on the moon Acura is looking for a hit while the strong selling MDX and RDX crossover are largely supporting the luxury brand Acura would really like to gain some enthusiastic credibility and make good on the brand's performance claims, hence the return of the Type S performance badge applied here on the Acura Type S Sports sedan concept. This new concept car certainly looks the part. The proportions are stunning. There is an elegance to the design, which is clean and without extraneous affectation. Even Acura's diamond pentagon grille is nicely integrated and tastefully done. In profile, there is more than a little bit of Audi A7. The striking blue color called the Double Apex Blue Pearl is set to hark back to uh, Hugh Offord of the 2007-2008 TL Type S. The Type S concept by Acura's own admission closely previews the next generation TLX midsize sedan, which we've already seen and rendered from uh, thanks to leaked images from uh, within the Acura's own infotainment system. While the new TLX will almost certainly have a transversely mounted engine, both the concept and the leaked images show us that Acura is working on giving the car a longer dash to axle ratio, uh, a design often uh, characteristic of luxury cars. We also expect that the concept uh, tail light and headlights designs will appear on the production car and we wouldn't be surprised if the quad exhaust tips also would make the transition to reality.